Okay, now cutting a taper or an angle is really not all that difficult on the lathe. What I've done without layout die, I went ahead and scratched the line there where it's supposed to be a half inch away from the edge. It's always good for a reference. So at this point, I'm going to just grab what I had here and I'm going to chuck it up and I'm going to pull a little bit of pressure on it, not a terrible amount because I don't want to tear up my shaft that I just got done turning. And I'm going to go ahead and close this so that I can, I can uh, do that again in the future. Now, I'm going to back out some. And now, in order to be able to get this to cut in a particular direction, I'm going to need to make some adjustments to my compound. And I already told you this was coming, so let's look at how to do that very quickly. I'm going to crack this loose and get rid of my tool because it's just going to be in the way for the few moments. And then I'm going to go and grab the appropriate wrench off the shelf, and I'm going to crack loose these two nuts. All right, now the studs protrude down in. And I'm going to get this turning. Now, sometimes it's going to lock up on you a little bit. It's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's just the studs kick a little bit inside of the socket, and they don't want to turn as easily as what they otherwise should. Um, but by playing with it a little bit, you can kind of get it to, to move in the direction you want. Now, going back to this drawing here, notice that with this drawing, I am going from the outside tip here, and I'm going back in that direction. So immediately I know that if this here is straight with the shaft, I need to be going in this direction, exaggerated. And I only need to go five degrees. So now that I've set my compound to the direction I want to go, I'm going to come down here to my graduated dial we talked about a while ago, and I'm going to set it at five degrees on that side of zero. Now remember, I grossly exaggerated that compound so that I could just show you like, hey, this is the direction we're going. So as long as we're on that side of zero when we set the five uh, degrees for this pr project, you know we're going to be okay. So it's just a little tip, and, and obviously watching one video isn't going to necessarily make you a master at this. However, it is a good exercise um, to, hear, to hear it at least um, how I think about it. So I'm going to snug these down a little bit. Not terribly tight. We don't want to strip them out, but they definitely don't want to move on you. And then what we're going to do is just give ourselves a little bit of room here by backing this up. And what I mean by room is, is that this only has so much travel. So we want to back it up to make sure that we have enough travel to cut uh, that five degrees all the way to the to, to where we were cutting it okay and now look what happened this got out of orientation all right now this isn't the worst thing in the world we have a couple options we can go ahead and bring our tailstock back up like we've done in, um, done before okay and then we can use that to line this up um, but but also remember too sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be a precise science and here's what I mean by that while you're cutting, as long as you have clearance here to where you're hitting just on the tip and not here, or just on the tip and not here, it really doesn't matter the orientation of the tool, as long as it's reasonably close. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to set this up in here so you can see where the tool is in relationship to where it was before. I'm going to grab my wrench, and I'm going to break this loose, and I'm going to kind of just turn it in here to where it looks reasonably close, and I'm going to snug it back down. Now, is it perfect? Probably not, but I don't necessarily require it to be during this operation. So I'm going to get my tailstock out of the way so I don't hit it, and I'm going to go ahead and wind in here and do much like I've done before, okay? But this time, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to set my X, or my Z, I'm sorry, and now I'm going to leave it there for the moment. And what I'm going to do is, is make sure that I don't grab my Z and move it anymore. I'm going to use, I'm going to leave it to this and then I'm going to use these two dials here, and I'm not going to touch this dial down here. Because the minute I touch this one, I've complicated things, because now I'm going in more than um, two directions at one time. All right, so with that, again, we've already marked this, but if we really want to do it <clears throat> uh, with a level of accuracy, what we can do is, is start by putting the cross slide up here some, or the compound, touch this off, right, much like we've done before, Z is zero, and then what we can do is, is go up here to a half inch. All right, and now we can just park it here. Now I know that this is exactly the half inch right here, so I can do it two different ways. One way, I can just continue to, do, to cut on this path until I just meet that line, 
or I can actually run my compound or my cross slide up till I just touch the part, and then I could actually back this off because it's such a shallow angle, I'm not taking a whole bunch of material, and then I can make that feature. So that's what we're going to do for simplicity's sake today. I'm going to show you how that's done. So we already we already know that my tool nose is is where it's supposed to be, right? Because I touched off on the end and I went Z over the half inch. Now what I'm going to do is is turn this on and I'm going to come up just until I touch. Cut that off, and for good measure, So now I've cut my taper. Now what you did here there is is a good bit of chatter. And so that is a problem that I have. Um, so what I'm going to do in that situation is, is I'm going to back everything off and I'm going to open this up and figure out what was loose. And chances are what the deal is is, is, is working off of this small stem is probably done, done it to me. So I'm going to move that over to here so I have a little bit more rigidity and I'm going to repeat the process very quickly. So I'm going to run back over here and I'm going to touch that off Z0 then I'm going to go over here to the half inch mark now I'm going to start the process again Now, as you can tell, immediately I didn't get the same level of chatter, uh, so this is a much best, better situation. Um, but again, I, you don't have a whole lot of room to be able to do that. We have a little bit of tolerance here, uh, but the best case scenario is, as you've seen, probably not the, the shank is, is the best place to do it, but rather the large part here. And then following uh, the, the best practices <clears throat> to keep that tight, and then uh, touching off the Z, bringing it over your half inch, and then always traveling one direction. And then, of course, it always is a good idea to have a set of calipers around so that you can make your measurements uh, accordingly. Now, also realize that your measurement is going to be straight as opposed to at an angle, uh, but this gets you a general idea of how far we are with this, and it looks like we're pretty much on. So that'll be it for this portion. We'll talk a little bit about filing next.